The first time I can remember hearing about Guo Wenguo was back in August of 2020. That's when Steve Bannon, do you remember this? He was arrested on federal fraud charges. He was accused of using money donated to an organization he was part of called Build the Wall, the southern border, to line his own pockets. And the people that arrested Bannon were U.S. Postal Service inspectors on the yacht of a Chinese billionaire off the coast of Connecticut. Struck me as kind of odd at the time. Well, the Chinese billionaire who owned the yacht is known as Guo Wenguo. He made his fortune in Chinese real estate but fled China in 2014 when he was accused of bribery and embezzlement. He then became a huge patron of Steve Bannon, the entire American right wing, even sponsoring last month's CPAC. Well, today it was Guo's turn to be arrested by federal agents on fraud allegations. Federal prosecutors in New York allege that Guo and a co-defendant conspired to defraud thousands of victims of more than approximately $1 billion through fictitious businesses and other online schemes. Political investigations reporter Jose Pagliari has been covering this story for the Daily Beast, and he joins me now. Jose, first, give us a little bit of context about, I, I really had not been that aware of Guo before the, the, the yacht incident with Bannon. But he's been a very vocal anti-CCP voice. He's very opposed to the, the, the ruling Chinese party and, and a real um, patron for, for conservatives in the U.S. What, what, who is he? What's his deal? So for those who've never heard of him, this is going to sound pretty unbelievable. But in a minute or two, everyone will understand exactly what's going on here. This guy has a huge voice in the Chinese dissident community. And it's because right now, China, as we all know, is cracking down on these Chinese oligarchs, especially those who threaten Xi Jinping and his authority there. And so he, this is one of those billionaires who fled to the United States. He came here in late 2014, sometime in 2015, and he made New York sort of the home base for this big fight against the CCP. Now, in doing so, he befriended all these far right wingers. And like you said, he became really close to Steve Bannon. Anyone who watches the War Room show that Steve Bannon has is familiar with Guo because he's a sort of like amateur rap artist who has a song mm. calling out the CCP and how bad they are, right? <laughs> but what people don't know about him is that he has been sued by everyone left and right in recent years, particularly in local court in New York, because what he tends to do is he tends to befriend dissidents, bring them in close, and then fool them. He defrauds them. And if they Allegedly. ever speak out against him, well, well, right, except that in all of these lawsuits, he has to detail time and time again exactly what it is that he does. And what he does is he brings people in close, and then any time they start questioning why they're not getting paid by him, he sicks his mob. He goes on social media and in Mandarin speaks to people and tells them to, to attack or go out against these people who he has now defamed. Now, what we know about him in recent years is that as he's been raising all this money from the dissident community and launching what has now gotten him into trouble with the SEC, he at the same time in court cases has been telling people who who fought against him that he's penniless. And so this is a really interesting story where we've got a guy who lives just three blocks away from Trump Tower in one of the best spots in Manhattan, a beautiful, huge condo that overlooks Central Park, while he's telling a lot of people that he's broke while also raising more than a billion dollars from people that he is telling uh, should be taking part in this effort against the CCP. But what we've learned today from this indictment is that what he allegedly has been doing with this money is actually just enriching himself. He's just pocketing it, much like, ding, 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 some of the right-wing friends that he's made over the year. Right. I mean, the, the allegation of Steve, Steve Bannon facing current federal charges, because he was pardoned in federal uh, charges by, by uh, Donald Trump, but then he was indicted by the district attorney in Manhattan for essentially telling people he's raising money to build the wall, using it to line his own pockets. There's sort of a similar structure to the alleged scheme here, although it's very sprawling. It seems like he's got his hands. I mean, there's like a there was a, a stable coin, a Himalaya coin scam. In one instance, Guo and his co-defendant built investors out of more than 260 million by a purported stable coin called the Himalaya dollar and a trading coin called the Himalaya coin or H coin, according to prosecutors. He allegedly spent the cash from uh, other uh, sources he had on a 50,000 square foot New Jersey mansion, a $3.5 million Ferrari, Chinese and Persian rugs worth nearly a million, and a $4.4 million uh, Bugatti. Uh, so there, am I right that there's like, the feds allege a, this is not a small thing. This is an enormous, sprawling, complicated kind of octopus of fraud that they allege he is at the head of. 
That's right. And I think so so the the main the key point here is that he launched this media company that would would sort of mimic what right wingers here in the US have done. These this this media company that's going to call out the big nasty government on the other side of the world. But uh, what the SEC claims he did is that he actually raised funds illegally. Now the the SEC the SEC exists to protect investors. Everyday investors like you and me, they they make sure that companies that go public, right, whose shares you can buy, that these companies are held accountable. They have to make certain reports. They have to disclose certain things. Um, and th this company of his is accused of not doing that. And actually, so in a few years ago, he actually settled with the SEC and agreed to pay back some half billion dollars. But what we're learning from this indictment is that while he was doing that, he was allegedly doing all, a whole other round of fundraising throughout through these really shady means. I mean, look, having written a book on Bitcoin almost a decade ago, I can tell you that at this point, anything that touches cryptocurrency makes me roll my eyes. I mean, stable Himalayan a coin people should know that that thing is not legitimate but the thing about him that list by the way that includes this mega mansion in New Jersey and these these luxury cars and this yacht that's currently harbored in Connecticut um, that's parked in Connecticut all these things he's accused of having we have to view that through the context of someone who fled China in 2014 and was accused of corruption there claimed years later in court he was he was deposed he's supposed to be under oath and telling yeah. the truth that he had not a penny while a few months later has raised nearly a billion dollars i mean this this stuff doesn't make sense and and pretty soon we're going to get a close look at exactly who he is and what he's doing because now he's not in a position of power anymore i mean up until today he yeah. would surround himself with armed guards and he just doesn't have that anymore the feds are on top of him and he can't escape yeah, we're, we, we now have a, you know, we're going to go through the normal American court process. He is, of course, innocent until proven guilty. Those are the charges against him. Jose Palieri, thank you very much.